Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. On a past edition of Sightings, we introduced you to Nick Pope, the British Defense Ministry's former point man for UFO investigations. When I first interviewed Pope last year, he told me that he was a non-believer until one extraordinary UFO report changed his mind completely. It's a case little known outside of England, but one that has the power to turn skeptics into true believers. Nick Pope has been transferred away from the UFO desk at the Ministry of Defense, but his book, Open Skies, Closed Minds, has him once again at the center of Britain's UFO debate. It's an unlikely position for a man who started out as a dyed-in-the-wool skeptic. When I started the UFO job at the Ministry of Defense, I really didn't know what I was letting myself in for. I came in as a skeptic and with very little knowledge of what it was all about. Then, one startling report, and Nick Pope was never the same again. I'd been doing the UFO job for uh, a year or so when a case came along which really changed my perception on the whole UFO mystery. It occurred on the 30th and the 31st of March, 1993, and it was without doubt one of the most major waves of sightings that Britain had ever seen. At 1.05 a.m., March 31st, 1993, the report began, radar did not detect a massive UFO in British airspace. There were military and police eyewitnesses and impeccable documentation. There were dozens and dozens of witnesses all over the country. Uh, many of them, because this was late at night, were police officers on night patrol and military personnel on guard duty. UFO investigator Doug Cooper was awakened at 2.20 that morning by a shaken Cornwall police sergeant who described what he and others had just seen. The object was black and it appeared to be shaped either something like a wedge shape or a delta wing shape or indeed like a catamaran, a twin hulled craft. There were lights on this, on this craft which they appeared to be at either end of it which they described um, as about 500 feet apart. At the Ministry of Defense, Nick Pope was being inundated with questions about the UFO's origins. I launched a full inquiry into this. I made a series of very detailed checks to try and find a prosaic explanation for this. I checked aircraft movements, uh, satellite tracks, um, airships, weather balloons, but after an extremely detailed inquiry that took me several weeks, I drew a complete blank. This was a genuine unknown. Pope and Cooper persevered, in large part because of the sheer number of reliable eyewitnesses. Pope poured over the reports of Devon Patrol officers Barry Mitchell and Gus Cotting, who observed the UFO near the Bristol Channel. See that, Gus? See that? Oh, what? Gus and I both sort of looked at each other and just stopped the car and we got out. I've never seen anything like that before. Certainly the three lights that we saw, I certainly formed the opinion that they were fixed to the same object, albeit I couldn't see any object, travelling at the same speed and had it been a conventional sized aircraft, it would have been a deafening noise. It was probably in our view for about 30 seconds. It was really, strange. really strange, yeah. Those are the three lights in the position, and uh, that's our vehicle. You just don't know what to say, do you? you don't, it's the first time you come across something like that. Their notes and drawings only came out after they discovered they were not alone. It's very difficult to come out of the closet, so to speak, and talk about these things openly. So Barry and I decided not to say anything initially, but then another officer in Cornwall came up over the radio and said that he had seen these lights. Once he had broken the ice, we well, just then said, well, yeah, we've seen them as well. And then other officers uh, came across the radio as well to say that they'd seen the, the lights as well. In fact, police all over southern England were calling dispatch with UFO sightings of their own. The other officers who saw these lights, albeit some of those officers were in excess of 60 or 70 miles away from where we were, the timing of their sighting was exactly the same as the timing of our sighting, which, putting the whole thing together, makes it even further uh, a, a bigger mystery. Police officers are reliable 
and they're not given to, to flights of fancy as far as we're concerned. They're reporting something which they're seeing, which they don't understand. This is basically what we're talking about. It's an object which they can't identify with. And I suppose to some extent, I mean, rather alarmed them. At MOD, Pope read secret Air Force documents and discovered that the RAF was just as baffled as he. He, he realized that something had happened and he seems to have gone out of his way to be as helpful as he possibly could by sending me a letter with, with the map on it, of course. We've never had this before from anybody in that position. Not only did Pope send a map showing when and how the UFO had traveled, he also included where, a complete list of sightings locations, including several military installations, something only the defense ministry knew. Pope did it because he felt the UFO posed a serious threat. Something had flown into England, and military radar didn't catch it. I ordered the radar tapes to be impounded and sent to me in my office. I then sat down, viewed them, and then brought in an air defense expert uh, to have another look. We were clear that there was nothing on the tape. This was very worrying. We'd got to reports from military personnel of a sizable craft operating very low over two of our military bases and there was nothing on radar so we never had any warning and we never even got our air defense aircraft into the into the air the mod are faced with a situation where they have an object flying across our counties and they have no way of detecting it whether they're alien uh, alien craft or otherwise is another matter but the fact is that an unknown craft crossed right across these counties, and the RAF do not appear to have picked it up on their radar. If a structured craft of unknown origin has evaded detection by the Royal Air Force, the implications are global. If the world's air defense systems cannot respond, what will? That's got to be extremely worrying, and that's got to mean that this whole UFO sighting is a matter of extreme defense significance. The party line, the Ministry of Defense standard view, is that UFOs are of no defense significance. Now, after this incident, I didn't have much time for that standard line. I felt it simply didn't stand up to the facts. And it was from this point that my views on the whole UFO phenomenon began to change. And I began to realize that it wasn't just lights in the sky. It couldn't be explained, and there may well be some extraterrestrial explanation to a hard core of these UFO sightings. We asked the Ministry of Defense for comment on this report. The MOD's official response states that while they remain open-minded about the possible existence of flying saucers, they, quote, remain unaware of any evidence which proves that these phenomena exist, unquote. <laughs>